Hey guys, I'm Tomer from the FRC Team 1577 Steampunk from Israel, and I'm going to have do a little rundown of how to use vision processing on using LabVIEW. So I'm using uh, the Vision Assistant that comes with the LabVIEW, so you actually don't need anything else but the LabVIEW and the FRC patch that comes with it, uh, released every year for that year. I'm using uh, the 2015 version, but this is a uh, it's not the latest one but it, it, it doesn't really matter it doesn't change that much from year to year so I'm just gonna find the vision assistant there it is so you open that up and there it opens a new program and it automatically asks you uh, what kind of program you want it to be so you select lab view and this will later let you create it as a lab view VI and put it straight into your lab view program so first of all uh, you take some pictures with your robot so you um, you take the camera that you're going to use because you want to be as close to uh, as close to what it's going to be in the game. Okay, so now that you've stored your photos in some place that you know where they are, you click on File, Open Image, and then uh, let's use the gear from this year's 2017 game. So you can either pick one photo and make your whole uh, photo recognition on this one photo, or if you want to make it better and more accustomed to different positions of the gear you can choose uh, more than one picture so let's say we take this picture uh, and select uh, you, you do not want to replace it so you want to add two then you can uh, jump between them with these two arrows right here and if you really want we can add a third picture to make it even better and I'll take this one so now that you have your three pictures selected, you're going to want to narrow down the colors, only to the color of the gear. So you click on Color Threshold here, and with one click, it'll open up this uh, menu. So now you're going to select the range of the color that you want to choose and keep. So everything that's outside of this range will be discarded. Anything that is going to be kept is marked with the red. So we're gonna jump over to this pick wait one sec you can also scroll through the arrow with the one so we're gonna select the color that we want to match to so we want to match this color the yellow so we draw with the mouse just long click draw a big square and you've got yourself and here it shows you which color you're at so I want to use the HSV you can also use the RGB but I found it uh, more accurate with the HSV color range. So basically you take these, you grab the bottom threshold and the upper threshold and you move them around until they match as close to what you want as possible. So you're going to grab all this stuff. Jump to the next part there. One. And you want to open up the range a little more. The range over here a little more. So that it only colors the one that you want. So you play with this for a bit until you have the most of your gear colored. Obviously the more the more of all three pictures the better. And the the less you have extra stuff, also the better. So now here, if I open this all the way up, then it's going to color everything else. Minimize it until it's almost just the gear. So once you're done with that, you click OK. And then you it, it deletes everything else but the parts that you need. You can scroll through the pictures to see that you have everything you need. And that's great. OK. Now that you have your color selected, you want you can use other filters here in the binary section. So you click on the binary section and you have all these other filters that you can use to make your image uh, recognition better. So the more you use, the better it will be, but it will leave out other stuff from different pictures. So first thing I want to do is take the basic morphing and here I can see the original photo on the left and the one that I'm going to change the leftovers on the right. So I want to take dilate and this will make everything a little bit more prominent. I can see it later on 
when I'm changing stuff around. So obviously you can change, you can click on size, and the bigger you are, the, the bigger you make it, the bigger everything will be dilated. I think I'll leave it at three for now, it'll be big enough. Let's scroll for the picture, see that it's okay. Yep, okay. Next thing we want to do is go to advanced morphology. Now that we have our uh, everything a little bit more dilated, we can remove all the small objects that we don't need. So for example, in this picture, there's a lot of little bitsy stuff that are not part of the original gear that we need. So we click on remove small objects and make the iterations bigger to remove bigger and bigger objects. Now we go to four so that I removed everything properly. Next, we see that I removed all this small stuff. Maybe five will remove this one. Nope, it's a part of them, so that's fine. And we skip to the next one. And this one's all cleared, and see that it didn't delete anything we need. And we click OK. So now we have a nice clean photo just of the gear. So now we're going to take advanced morphology again. And this time, we're going to choose something else. This time, we want to take fill holes. This will let us fill up all the little holes left in our image to make it one big solid object so that we can take the center of mass and use the, or the actual center of the, the whole gear even though it has a little hole in the middle and on the sides. So we scroll down over here to oh, scroll down fill holes, click on that and it fills up everything over here and we turn this one, fill the, all the holes over here and everything is one big solid object. Great. Now that we've filled up all the holes that we need to, we can go again to the binary filter and select the particle filter. So then we go down all the way to the ratio and we go to the ratio equivalent elapse axes. And now we can get the ratio of x to y's to make sure that our object is not too wide or too tall or too big or too small. So this will be the maximum value, the minimum value, and this will be the maximum value that the ratio would be in pixels. And we can key, either remove that one or keep it. In this particular one, it's pretty much the same, so it doesn't really matter because we only have one big object. And this little noise in the side doesn't really change anything because our x and y center of mass axis, which is what we'll need to centerize on it later, is pretty much the same. So we can just click OK and move on to the next part. So now that we have all that done, we're ready to send over our information. We click on the particle analysis, and this will make a chart of everything that we need. So uh, here you can select the select measurements and choose all the little credentials that you want to send over to your LabVIEW program. So you can, there's a whole lot of options here. What we usually take is the center of mass six, x center of mass y which will give you uh, the where the the center of the gear is on the y and x axes of the screen and the area this is because sometimes you have two objects for example in the 2016 games where there were two lines on the right and the left or even in the 2017 game where on the right and left of the peg you had two lines separately and then you want it to take the bigger ones, the one that's closer to you. Or in this case, if you still have one little bunch left, then you'll select only the big solid one. So we'll do that separation later in LabVIEW. So we check to see that we have everything here. So we only have one column, but if we'll have another area, we'll use another, there will be another column and you can compare the areas later. So you click on OK. And now you're basically done your processing. Okay, so then now that we have all our filters done, all we need is to make it into a VI and put it into our LabVIEW program. So we click on Tools, Create VI, and then here you just put in the name where you want to save it. So I put it in Desktop, give it a name, <clears throat> Vision 4, because I already have 1 to 3 and it doesn't really matter what you call it written correctly or not 
So you spell, you click on next, then you click on next again, and now you have to make sure it's on image control, otherwise you can, it'll have no outputs. So you click on image control, next, and you scroll down and make sure that the particle measurements in pixels is what's marked as checked. This will give you the output, so you can either add, output the particle measurements in real world or in pixels. The pixels I found more accurate, so we're going to use that right now. So you can click on uh, finish here, and it creates your little VI, and you're done. So now that you have your little VI done, you open your robot program, you go into vision processing, control E on this one. Okay, so now that you have this opened, you go over to your desktop and you drag your vision processing VI into here. And you take the purple wire from the get image block and you put it into the purple input in your VI. So now you have the array over here, and which is the exact same array that we output it here in the bottom, this last one, with the center of mass X in the first row and center of mass y in the second row and area on the third row. So the reason we kept the area is if you have two uh, objects and you want to get to the closer one, the bigger one, or you have noise and you still have little smudges left, you'll usually want the bigger one. So what you'll do is you'll go into the array and index array and then you connect it into the array part right here. So now if you just need the center of mass and you have one object like we do, then it's fine. You just put in the row and then the column and you get the output right here. But if you have two and you need to decide which one by area, you click on the row and you create the constant and you go to row number two, zero, one, two, and that'll be your area one. So you go back to the array and you take the maximum and minimum. So we take this array, the one that we just looked at, and we compare the two areas. So if we had two objects or three objects, we compare the areas and we obviously take the maximum value, right? So now we're going to open uh, index and we want the bigger area, but we don't really care what the area is, we just care which one it is. We take this, we make it into the same array that we had before, and we need to put it into the column one because we're deciding depending on the column this column or this column or this column so you put the maximum index this one which one is it and then you pick that and put it into the column and then if you want center of mass x you put zero here and if you want center of mass y you put uh, one over there and then you'll get the output right here in the subarray and that's basically how you do vision analysis using LabVIEW Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in our next video.